Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Easy CS for you. This video is about the question and answers of basic concepts of OOPs. So if you are not subscribed to my channel, please click on this link to subscribe to my channel. This video is about what all the questions we can expect from this chapter in your examinations. One mark question. So what are the questions you can uh, expect for one mark questions? So the first question is, what is the fundamental idea of object oriented programming? So the answer is classes and objects. Second question is, define the term class. A class is a collection of objects having the same features. For example, planets, sun, moon, or all the members of the class, solar system. Third question is, what is an object? An object is a real world entity with attributes and functions. Fourth question is, define the term data abstraction. Abstraction refers to the process of representing essential features without including the background details. Fifth question is, what is encapsulation? Encapsulation combines data and functions into a single unit called class. And sixth question is, what is meant by function overload? Two or more functions having the same name with different number of arguments or they differ in the data type of the arguments is called as function overloading. Seventh question is define polymorphism. What is polymorphism? The ability of an operator and function to have many forms is called as polymorphism or you can write taking many forms the ability of taking many forms is called as polymorphism you can write in both the way eighth question what is inheritance the ability to acquire features from one class to another class is called inheritance ninth question is what is a base class it is a class whose properties are inherited by another class is called as base class. Tenth question is, what is derived class? It is a class that inherits properties from base class. It's called as derived class. And the eleventh question is, define the term data binding. Data of a class can be accessed only by the functions of the same class. It is called as data binding. And the last question is, mention any four high-level languages that follow object-oriented programming. The answer is C++, Java, Python, C Sharp, and J Sharp. So these are all the one mark questions. When it comes to two mark questions, you can expect questions like define polymorphism, give an example, define inheritance, uh, mention two types of inheritance, or define abstraction, give an example, or define encapsulation, give an example. So you have to get ready with definitions as well as examples so that you can easily answer for two more questions. The first question is define polymorphism given an example. So polymorphism means taking many forms. Consider an example addition. So the addition operation is used to add two integer numbers, two floating point numbers, as well as to concatenate two strings. So based on the condition, the same operation is going to perform different operations. That is called as polymorphism. Second question is, what is the significance of classes in OOPs? A class is a way of grouping objects having similar characteristics. Once a class is defined, any number of objects can be created. 
An example for this is planet, sun and moon or the members of the class solar systems. Next section is five more questions. So in this, the first question is write the difference between top and oops. So for five more questions from this chapter, they will ask only one question. Hence, if you thorough with these questions, it's enough. You can definitely score five marks. So the first question is write the difference between pop and oops. So write the difference between these two. So what is the difference in pop? It mainly concentrates on procedures rather than data. In oops, it mainly concentrates on data rather than procedures. Second one, data is openly shared from one procedure to another procedure. In OOPS, data is not openly shareable. In POP, procedures are divided into a number of procedures and each procedure performs a specific task. When it comes to OOPS, it is made up of number of entities called objects. In POP, it employs top-down designing approach. In OOPS, it employs bottom-up approach. High level languages like Pascal, C, and Fortran employs procedure oriented programming. And high level languages like C, C, -sharp, Java, J, -sharp employs this programming design. The next question is explain the advantages of OOPS. So, what are all the advantages of OOPS? It, uh, first thing is it implements real world scenario. Second point is the programs are modularized based on the principles of classes and objects. And third point is it reduces code duplication and increases code reusability with the help of inheritance. And fourth point is easier to develop complex software because complexity can be minimized through inheritance. And fifth one is creation and implementation of OOP code is easy and reduces software development time. And fifth point is data encapsulation along with functions. Therefore, external non-member functions cannot access these data, thus provides data security. And last advantage is OOPs can communicate through message passing, which makes interface description with outside the function is very simple. Next question is write the advantages of object oriented programming. So list out all the disadvantages of object oriented programming. And the last question is write the real life applications of object oriented programming. So mention all the applications of object oriented programming. So if you thorough with these questions, it's easy to score seven marks from this chapter. Hope this uh, video will help you to learn these questions easily for your exam. Thanks for watching.